And welcome back. This is hour two with my, my guest, Danny Katz. Uh, we're going to continue having a great conversation. Um, we, we just as a, as a small reminder, we talked a, a little bit about the healing of the human race, um, what, where we are at, what are some, some changes or some transformations that we see in the future for, for our whole collective after we go through the, the, stormy, the stormy period we're in right now. Um, and I liked that you mentioned the, the Aquarian dialogues. <laughs> that was a very good idea. And then uh, the, look, the, the other two ideas that I have that we can uh, connect to what we're talking about is, well, one we, we started going into, which is the reawakening of the divine feminine. Uh, and I asked, how is it going? any pitfalls that we should avoid. And I think we, we kind of covered a little bit of that. But then again, on the, another, another one connected to this, which goes into a more mystic realm also, is the role of higher beings in our collective healing. So uh, this, this, I think we started looking at a little bit at the end of the, of the first hour, this, this idea of, of us not being just the body, there, there being some energetic force, electromagnetic, whatever that is actually living this life and living the lives of all of us, playing that it's, that it's not, playing, playing hide and seek with, it, with itself, like they say. And it, it seems for me in this, in this play, um, in, in Hinduism they call it Leela, the, the, the divine play, in this divine play, there seems to be, it's not hierarchy, that we were also talking about that. It's not necessarily a hierarchy, but you got like, okay, nothing manifests for some reason in some way, maybe inevitably manifests as God, which then like subdivides and subdivides and subdivides in sort of levels is what it looks like. And you know, you have the, I think it's the Kala Chakra in, in Buddhism and Hinduism, which is this, this wheel which has, I believe it's humans in the center. And then in the outer, in the outer parts, you have like the, 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 higher, the higher beings, the, the devas, etc. And, and if you go in, uh, if you go in, you have the animals, then you have um, hungry ghosts, I think demons or, or devas, whatever. So there is this kind of, I like how they, they're not drawing it in this hierarchical way, but more in a concentric circles, which and it also makes me think of this idea of Atlantis being a city that was made with concentric circles again, but at the same time, it had a, a pyramid in the center, perhaps. I don't know. So, because I, again, maybe if, if we think about this unifying humanity and balancing masculine and feminine, if we only use concentric circles, then there is no, no, no masculine aspect to that. So maybe there should be hierarchy and uh, circularchy or something. <laughs> <laughs> I like circularchy. I've been, you know, in, in the book, and I'll come back to what you were saying, but like, I just didn't, heterarchy is so clunky and I'm like, I'm not really clear where we're going. So I've, I've coined the term betterarchy. Like, I don't know what it is. I just know that it's better. And, and yes, like, yes, there is this need for a masculine, but it, it, this kind of ties into like, just talking about higher beings. I don't know, you know, and I, and I do notice how in 3D reality and where we're coming from, it's myth and narrative and that's beautiful. And there's so much value in that. But for me, as far as what drives me, where I see myself going and humanity going is, I feel like that's all very 3D. Like for me, it's more light and geometry. And I've gotten into so many different um, kind, not, it's not even debates because I don't really care. I'm not really that invested, but people who are more inculcated into spiritual traditions around hierarchy and narrative and a hierarchy of beings and all these and, and I have kind of touched in with some beings, but I'm reticent to give it 
too much brain space or try to make sense of it. It feels like a bit of a distraction because I honestly feel like we're evolving out of narrative and out of archetype and out of physical incarnations into more of a realm of light and shape and frequency. So I don't, I mean, I could play the conjecture game around that, but it just feels less and less relevant to me. Um, and that's not to say that I think, you know, we're, we're living in a vacuum where we're just human beings. I don't think that at all, but I get that with the limitations of my third dimensional senses, it's just me guessing and it feels less valuable to guess at that game and more valuable to let it all go and just move deeper and deeper into frequencies and, and geometry. Yeah, I think that's a very wise position to, to hold. Mm. Because yeah, all, all the different descriptions we, we use, they, they, they can become so, so colorful and so bright that that we lose sight that okay these are still just maps they are not the thing um but then again it, it also makes me think you, you mentioned uh, geometry or or number or mm, like the these things could be manifestations of 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 these higher and what we would call entities that we we tend to then humanize just to say entity we we then believe okay it's kind of like a human that's kind of transparent or something but uh, i i tend to think you know that whatever you you believe is real so in a way it's like both and so um it's like depending on what the perspective is, you know, if we're talking about, for example, higher beings, this is just, again, I, let me just clarify, it's just my, my opinion, my intuition, whatever, but it feels like from our perspective, the only, or the most of the perception that we can get of, of them, let's say, which is also an illusion because it's still the same energy that I was mentioning that's coming out of my eyes, is the same energy that is coming out of theirs, just in a different part of the inner of the circles within circles. But for us, when we when we experience them, we tend to experience them perhaps in our imagination, in our mind, in our hearts. They they are more like feelings. They they are uh, in a, in our knowledge, in our uh, in our mathematics or, or or stuff more like the more. Um, uh, subtle aspects of of human life which are connected to the mind but then I, I i'd like to think that if if i was because right now this energy that i say looking through my eyes at this very moment is it's looking through the eyes metaphorically speaking through the eyes of every entity every thing that exists at the same instant it's doing it's like putting all the fingers in all the puppets at the same time. It's looking out of everything, so past, present, future, different parts of the circle. And if you were able to, if if my awareness, this is, this is a, a tricky thing. So if my awareness of myself was able to, to move its focus from Rafa, from this body and this mind, or, or switch the frequency. So to move the focus to one of these beings and in order for it to experience being one of them, they maybe would have to perceive themselves as having some sort of body, right? And that body would be in, in this kind of two-way street of matter and, and subtlety, of density and subtlety, in this two-way street, that body perhaps would be formed or shaped by the thoughts in the minds of humans and in the hearts of humans where we experience them here, because we are in the center of, of according to, to this tradition, we, we would be in the center. So the, their bodies would be shaped out of our own beliefs. So in that way, if many people believe in, in, uh, in Odin, okay, so there is this Odin, this possibility of this energy to experience being Odin and having the certain kind of body that Odin would have, according to human thought. 
So, and, and another aspect of this is humans are placed in the center uh, in, in this diagram because apparently we are the only ones who can get enlightened or the only way, let's say, out of, of this cycle of birth and rebirth in which you go from the lowest and darkest kind of creature to the highest god and, and semi-gods and whatever, you cross all of that many, many times, etc. The only way out is through the through the kind of the keyhole is a human incarnation. That's why why human incarnation is is deemed so so important. And it's a very trippy aspect also because we look at these higher, we call them higher entities, but they are actually in regards to the to the goal of existence. If the goal is to exit samsara, in regards to that, they are actually in a in a worse situation than us because they have all the pleasures and all the freedom of the world. So they don't even have an interest in in exiting the the thing. But at the same time, maybe they don't have the the, the type of suffering that that humans have. So I don't know. It's it's a pretty interesting deal if you if you get the the possibility to incarnate in a higher being. But just to, to close the loop of the thing, so I do believe that in whatever their natural or yeah, the natural form is, I do believe there is interaction between the different densities, the different scales or, or circles of these circles, circles in the, the human world, in part perhaps because it's the place where one can do the the most important thing so they 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 like being able to access here because there is a particular type of energy here that isn't present in their realms so i do believe that part of these higher selves higher beings let's call them beings of life beings of geometry part of them are trying to help the evolution of humanity into new areas into new realms of consciousness and i believe that's a pretty a pretty great thing that we have allies of, of that sort that can see things that we don't and can can help move certain aspects of of the of the game towards a a, a world of more peace and less suffering what do you think <laughs> um <clears throat> this is one where i just keep going back to i don't know i mean when I hear you say, and obviously I've heard this, you know, a number of times that the reason why humans are so special is because we're the only ones who can do X, Y, Z. How do we know that? Mm -hmm. Because someone told it, because we read it in a book. I think that the, the true vastness of, of the life game and the reality game is really beyond the scope of our third dimensional mind. So more and more when I hear these stories of these helper beings and this is why humans are so special and this is samsara, I'm just like, maybe, I, I feel like it's so, we grok less than 1% of 1% of 1% of 1% of 1% of what's really going on. And that number, as I just said, is still too small. So it feels to me, <clears throat> about as useful as like reading us magazine or watching television mm -hmm. it's just like and i get that it's fun and i've done it a million times you know and i continue to do it but when it push comes to shove we're all talking out of our asses none of us know and sure i could you know like right now i'm rereading the right use of will book series and it's allegedly you know someone channeling god but it's still filtered through a human being so I go back to, I don't know. And with the helper beings, it's like, well, is it a helper being or is it a memory of a past life? Or is it an aspect of a fractal that represents a whole collective that's presenting itself in this way so that I as a human can find it relatable? And I mean, I go through phases of like, Yes, this deity is my helper and my guides and this and that, but I'm I'm just less and less inclined to play that way because I, I don't know. And I, you know, what's coming through when you first opened this up was kind of, and no part of me likes the authoritarian um, control aspects that come through the Muslim tradition, but I kind of do dig 
the um, not prohibiting because I don't like prohibiting anything, but the leaning into the geometry and away from having personifications mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. all that is because I just think we don't know. And I think that humans are really uncomfortable with I don't know. And I feel like the solution to a lot of our issues that we're facing is just the courage and willingness to say, I don't know. And I know a lot of false information comes through, you know, like I listen to Gigi Young and I, and I listen to Magenta Pixie and I listen to Linda McGillis and like all these people are fascinating to me, but then I hear, you know, Magenta Pixie is channeling the nine. So for the past two years, I'm like, what do the nine have to say? And then Gigi Young is like, well, the nine is like an unloving AI computer system and then I'm like oh now Gigi says I should trust Magenta's channeling of the nine and I'm realizing all of this is giving my power away to external shit that I don't really know and experience myself mm, yeah that's less, very that's yeah very, I'm just less, less inclined to do it because I don't know yeah it's very powerful to to be able to I think this is something something else that we share this this ability to to think of all these crazy things and then to just okay just drop the the ball and be eh, whatever maybe i don't know i mean for me it's it's such a such a i really love thinking about these 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 um these things in part kind of like a, a an exercise in mental flexibility to like think how the things would be from the perspective of something other than human and and which can so I, I sometimes like I can imagine them and I've I've i when when doing Akashic readings I've I've received like visuals of 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 kind of like the timelines being kind of like roots moving in like a, a, a black background and them being able to like move them and play with them and introduce stuff in and like you just said it's it's being filtered or at least the information that is coming actually from myself, not from something other than me, it's coming in a way that I can understand it or that I can understand a certain meaning, which is actually what they are trying to, or what is trying to awaken is a certain meaning. And, but can I tell you, uh, yeah, I can tell you maybe more than one, but I, I can start telling you one story. This is one that I've already told before, but, that, but you probably don't know it. So when I was small, I was I went to, to a friend's house to a sleepover. I was 11, if I'm not mistaken, 11 or 12, I think it was I was 11. I went to his house to sleep. Okay, went to bed, sleep. The following morning, I wake up, the sun is already out, and the room has a, a layout in which both our beds are facing towards the um, the door the door isn't like on the front but on the on the front in the side right in the corner it, it you would like go to the front and then right and exactly when you leave the room if you go left you have the the living room which has a, an open arch okay so the door was open we fell asleep with the door open and from the living room let's say or or definitely through the door this was like maybe 6 a.m., the, the sun was already up. Through the door comes in a, a purple cloud of smoke, okay, kind of like a, a cloud, a kind of dense cloud. And on top of the cloud, sitting with arms crossed, is a, a tiny purple genie, you know, like in cartoons, etc. And I swear, I saw this, and the, the, the guy, the, the smoke and the genie on top, he turns around, looks at me, just like, like acknowledging that, that I can see him and that he can see me, like, hello. He doesn't say anything, just looks at me, turns around and goes away into the living room and just disappears. And I was like, what did I just see? <laughs> I don't know. That was an experience I had when I was small. So when I think of higher beings or, or beings other than human, I mean, this is in, in my background, which, which is like, okay, I know there is something else I definitely know that it's not just the body. Uh, and that's why it, when I started discovering spirituality a lot later, uh, it, it was relatively, not easy, but relatively 
Uh, I had a certain affinity with, with the possibility of what spirituality talks about. Then uh, I can tell you another one. I, I was in, in uh, I, I was getting a, a this, this friend, friend of my girlfriend's, she's a Reiki master and she's like 50, 45, 50, somewhere around there. And she's giving me a, a, a Reiki session. It was one of the first of my life. I was kind of skeptic, skeptic. Um, and she's, she's got her hands on my shoulders. I'm sitting on a chair, hands on her shoulders, on my shoulders. She's sending me energy, etc., etc. And we're there. And suddenly I sense on my hands, on my head, two hands, two like, and when they when they press against my head, I get this sensation that they are kind of like chubby or fat fat hands and and black in color i get the the message these are fat and they are black and i, I sense the hands on while at the same time i'm sensing her hands on my shoulders so i don't know where these hands came from but i definitely sense them so even coming from a um a subtle realm they like Kind of like you know the 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 seances when they manifest uh, the 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 dark smoke or whatever they call it. The, it's not dark, sorry. The the smoke, the ectoplasm, I think it is. Kind of like that, it manifested into physical reality and touched my head. And for me, that was another moment that was wow. Okay, these are fascinating. I can play this way. <laughs> you ever had anything um, so, close to that? I have. So these are these are the two. I've had a bunch, but the two that are popping to mind. One. Um, so I I spent a few years going back. I, I lived in New Mexico for a few years, I, and then I would visit Los Angeles, and I would stay with different friends. And I went back, and I stayed with friends in a house, and they warned me ahead of time that the house was haunted, and that the room that I was staying in was, and it. <clears throat> As soon as I laid down to go to sleep, it happened within the first five minutes, I felt something grab my ankle, like a hand grab my ankle. And I said, no, like you need, you are not allowed to touch me. I get that this is your home, but you are not allowed to lay hands on me. And it let go and we were fine for the rest of the night. And allegedly it was like, oh yeah, that happens all the time there. But the, the most recent one, which I thought was fascinating, well, and I want to be clear, it's not necessarily the most recent because one, one thing I experience a lot of the time is when someone is speaking to me and I get that my angels are speaking through them and they're saying things to me that they have no idea about, but that I need to hear and whoever's watching my back is having them say for me. But um, so I bought some property in New Mexico earlier this year. And for as long as I've lived in New Mexico, you know, it's lots of spirits here. It's a very mystical place and part of the world. And I've heard people talk about um, difficulties in clearing the land and, and the energies on the land and coming into right relationship with the land. And I just thought like, how hard can that be? Like, what's the big deal? So my land is in a part um, that's kind of um, known for it wasn't able to be conquered when the Spanish came through. There was something about the energy where the spirits were like, no, you don't get to mess with this land. So my land has a river on it. And when I bought the land, it was the middle of winter. So I could obviously couldn't go in the river. <clears throat> but as soon as it was warm enough, I went for a swim in my river. <clears throat> and when I'm in the water, which is my happy place, I just float and I space out into God knows, you know, whatever extra dimensional realms. And I'm just in total bliss land. My girlfriend, Alia, calls it the water portal. So I was blissing out in my river for about four hours and just being, you know, like taking in the trees and just marveling and being grateful. And I was floating with my head, you know, I was in the water. My head was leaning against a rock. And after about four hours, I had the thought, I think it's time to go. And as soon as I had that thought, something bit me on the back of my neck and hard, like it was shockingly hard. And I had this weird feeling of like, uh, this is not from this realm. So I reached back to get it off. It came up from the water and it, it wouldn't let go. And the thought was like, for whatever this is, the amount of strength it has is not proportional to how small it is. And it felt like, you know how like a child will draw a sun and it 
has like beams coming out. It felt like whatever it was had a mouth like that with teeth, just sharp teeth all around. So I reached back to get it off. It felt kind of like a beetle and I couldn't get it off. And I had to grip it really hard. And then it just kind of shattered in my hands. That was how much strength it required of me to get it off me. <clears throat> and I just had a bizarre feeling about it. And then I, of course I went home and geeked out on the internet, like, but what are things that bite in New Mexico? What could this possibly be? And I posted about it on social media and no one knew what it was. And then two different mystics said it was a water spirit. <clears throat> and it was just kind of showing me who was boss. And apparently I had given them the wrong color cornmeal when I made my offerings. They like blue cornmeal, not yellow cornmeal. And, you know, them letting me know that this is their river and I can't come in. And so, that was a bizarre experience I had with something not of this realm. I love the, um, the, the, the OCD aspect of, the, um, of spirituality. I love it. <laughs> like, oh, the, the, the mudra, you have to do like this and then that. And that, and that. It's like a very precise thing, which right. for, for some reason, I guess it, it kind of gets, gets strength from, from the repetition, from the habit, from the thousands of years of people doing and believing, and, and it, which is on its own amazing that, that people would, could be, because I tend to believe that, that those types of things have an effect. So like then my question is, how do they get the, the, the energy or the ability to have an effect? So in, in that in that OCD thing, but at the same time it's funny. It's like, oh no, you did the, the thing like this. No, you gotta start all over from the you gotta take 20 more minutes to start again or, or a whole lifetime because oh at that, that point you should have done the other gesture. But exactly. I mean, so many people in town were berating me, like, you didn't make offerings to the river. And I was like, of course I made offerings. I offered yellow cornmeal and all my prayers, and they're like, no, it's gotta be blue. That was literally what they said. Literally, like wow. multiple people I'm so many. I mean, that's a big thing in New Mexico is the spirits of the land. And like when I cut down a tree branch without asking permission and then it smacks me in the face and gives me a black eye, you know, like, OK, I'm sorry, I didn't ask. Yeah, <laughs> they're, yeah. really, they're really into etiquette. The spirits are very right. persnickety about how they're honored. Totally. And and on the one hand, I, I tend to think like, for example, ritual is a very important thing that, again, moving forward, we, we are learning to, to incorporate and make into a, a, a normal part of our lives. And so sometimes ritual, you, you have your altar and you, you do some, some OCD thing with the fire or the something, etc., uh, or you sing something. But what I'm understanding these days is that the importance of all of that is to create a state within us. So normally we are, if you want to think it scientifically, okay, you're going from certain waves uh, to, to alpha or to whatever, to delta, etc. You're moving to different waves. Okay, that's one aspect. If you want to measure, that's a way. But it's the, the, the personal experience, the, the subjective experience that you're having it's like, oh, suddenly you're like more peaceful. You're more aware of, of, of the love. You're more aware of the gratitude or for whatever is in your life. You're more aware of, of all these nice feelings and things, which you could then think, okay, this connects in, into higher realms with, with beings that represent this state that I'm in right now. So that's a very important use of ritual. But I tend to think of it like, okay, just create your own ritual that takes you to that place. But then you have this thing, oh, you threw the, the thing of a color instead of the other color. And the thing that lives in a higher dimension came and beat your head. It's like, that's really extreme. It was super extreme, but it's also, I mean, that's part, New Mexico is known for being very intense. You know, the landscape is very intense and the landscape is so prominent here. So it's, it's one of the things that I love about it is that that spirit world is so big here, you know, and has, and, and you know, the natives who are from here and people who live here for a long time, we realize like we are secondary to the land and to the ways of the land. 
Um, and I think that's super cool. Yeah, and, and probably through repetition and belief, these entities were allowed into 3D in, in certain exceptions, in certain ways, and to be pacified when they got wrathful, they, they tested kind of sort of scientifically, okay, no, yellow corn doesn't do anything, let's throw the blue, okay, it did the job. Now this, this creature is peaceful and we can get into the water and nothing happens. So it's, it's weird. I think that kind of feels sort of silly and, and kind of crazy to actually, if you were to test it and get results, I haven't done the test myself, but through stories, you can kind of get an, an intuition of, okay, it's kind of, it feels like something is going on, something at least um, uh, transparently real is going on, right? It's like not completely material, not completely the other way, but it's a, a kind of mix between the two the two worlds, which which is it's, it's fun. It's like if you if you were to live uh, in if you went to the jungle and and you know there's a tiger and they tell you oh you gotta leave meat because if you leave um, vegetables it's not gonna work. It kind of feels like there is a kind of uh, an ecology or a, a, a kind of others uh, invisible bi biology that's around us all the time. So then you get into these circles within circles. Maybe this creature that, that needs the particular thing to be a beast isn't in the same uh, area of the circle as a being who just from you connecting to your heart is enough, right? So they are less demanding perhaps of you. Yeah, it's well, it's interesting because you described it as this seems sort of not real. And to me, it feels more real. Mm -hmm. Like living in a way where I'm where every time I go to my land, I need to bring an offering for the spirits, that feels way more real and closer to reality than just living in a city and like walking into a house without any awareness of it. And I also think and you know, Emily and Michael Juan and I did a show about this earlier this week, but I think that New Mexico has always been an interdimensional portal and landscape. And I think this overlay of just 3D is an illusion. And I also think in terms of like the Hopi prophecy and this part of the world being like the neutral safe zone for what we're experiencing now and what you know, if I had to guess, is probably going to accelerate in the next day, weeks, months. You know, I, I, I think we're really in it. And this is allegedly a safe and protected spot. We'll see how that goes. But if that's the case, I think a lot of it is this continued engagement and honoring and relational dynamic with the land that's much dates that I've been to. And I think it also reflects the native culture here because you know there are a lot of native tribes here that have been here since the beginning and that's a very specific etiquette that's very different from the more like casual California thing that I'm used to of like asking permission so it makes sense that that's mirrored in the land like there's a parallel there um, as far as like the natural social etiquette here in New Mexico and how we're also expected to be engaging the land. Well I I also got recently this, this idea or this understanding of the world around us, because many of these things, when, once, once you say them, they are kind of maybe obvious or, or, or simple, but it's kind of like until you, you get the words that make it resonate within you, you don't realize it. And when you realize it, it's always been that way. So I got this kind of idea that, that the, um, all of, all of material reality, all of the outer world is, well, I think we talked about this a little before in the, on the first hour, it's a, a reflection, it's a manifestation, a condensation of our, of our soul. It, so like I, I was listening to somebody talking about trees or the forest or something like that. And immediately I got the image, oh, wow, the forest is my soul. So that was kind of the, the thing that came instantaneously. So we tend to think of ourselves being separate from the thing outside, but then you think, okay, so if the tree didn't create the air, I couldn't breathe. If I didn't create the air that it breathes, it breathes, it couldn't breathe itself. The roots need the water, my body has water. So everything is inside everything else. 
So then you think, okay, I'm just one, one piece or one organ of a, of a higher or of a larger self, at least in the physical realm. And that higher self is not just physical, but it's so, so much higher that it becomes subtler things. And, and the, the outside representing the soul and the soul, it's connected to the mind. So one of the things that, that, that I got from that is that in our house, we have certain objects and what we are actually doing is we are projecting a part of our, for example, our subconscious mind into our objects. So kind of like in part as a reminder that there's this kind of work still left to be done. So um, you have this, this particular uh, jacket or whatever that reminds you of when, when you were young and you did this thing and you still have it, but you don't use it, but it's still there. It's because probably the mind is, is like, okay, I'm not gonna deal with this right now. I'm not going to process or transmute this energy. Let's just push it into matter and into the room so that we can see it all the time and all the time be reminded, okay, there's this, this work or this uh, integration or, or expansion uh, available for us. Yeah, totally. Um, have you, are you familiar with Lyle Watson? No, can you say the name again? Lyle Watson? No. no. <laughs> He's an evolutionary biologist. He's fantastic. And he wrote this book called, um, I'm going to mangle it. I think it's called The Secret Meaning of Objects. Mm. Let me look it up real quick. It'll take two seconds. Um, he's really... Uh, the Nature of Things, The Secret Life of Inanimate Objects. Mm -hmm. And he talks about, and I definitely have relationships to objects where I can just, like I'm drawn to certain things in this way that's so strong and powerful. And then all I have to do is touch it and I'll be flooded with all these past life memories or or seeing connections to things that I hadn't seen. Um, so objects for me are definitely a way that I tap in to other dimensions or kind of the like larger interconnectedness that um, defies our you know ridiculous notions of linear time. Yeah, it's kind of like, like, like we are a kind of, you know, those, those clothes that, that have two different colors on the outside and the inside. So it's like we are like that and our, our physical body and our um, individual consciousness is like one side of the thing and the, the context around us is the other side of the jacket. It's, so we have the, the, the red part and the blue part or whatever and, and, and they, they connect together. They are a, 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 a continuous thing. It's just that it's not only material, which is where it becomes difficult to recognize uh, that we are connected to everything, even though just from the example of the tree and the air, we are connected materially to everything. Somebody said the trees are the outer part of your respiratory system. Mm. That, that is another way of, of making it very clear how connected we are. But it's so, so amazing. Life and existence is so amazing that it has invisible parts that we don't always notice. And we are connected to everything and to our environment, not just in the material sense, but through all of that. So maybe we can just call it the, the electromagnetic aspect of ourselves is connected to the electromagnetic aspect of the, of the environment. And I think as we become more and more aware of how, of who we are, of how expansive and how infinite our self is, I don't know, this, this might take us humanity so long. I, I can understand all of this at a mental level. I'm like pretty clear. I'm still in the, in the work of bringing that information down to the rest of the body. Um, I, I, I luckily became aware of how important it is to, to, to ground all that information in the body and in the, the example that, that one is in the world. Uh, because that is what really teaches and what really moves uh, the collective forward is the example, not just the, the words out of my mouth. Um, 
and I'm I'm very very happy to to have conversations like these uh, and to to be able to to share my mind, but also to reflect on how important it is to to come back to to the body because it's it's not something that we need to reject at all. Oh no, not at all. The the body's so magic, as above, so below, as outside, inside, and you were talking about trees, and it reminded me I live. Um, on a golf course, literally wow. on the golf course. And around the whole golf course, I take these walks, are all these pinion trees. And I'm developing a deeper and deeper relationship to these trees. And the trees drip their sap um, and their resin. And I'm kind of obsessed with it because the smell of pinion tree resin is just magical. And so I collect the resin because a lot of the times like it'll just fall on the ground and I consider it the greatest gift when there's just a beautiful glob of resin on the ground. I don't have to like take it off of the tree. And I made, you know, when I walk through, if I see dead leaves or dead, like, you know, pine, they're not leaves so much, but I'll, I'll kind of tend to the trees and groom them and lighten their load and kind of work with them. But I made a batch of um, salve from their sap. I mix it with beeswax and coconut oil and I sent it to some friends. It's very good for the skin. And I got at some point, the trees kind of communicated to me that they were teaching me how they communicate telepathically among themselves and that this sap and everyone I gave it to, to we were linked and that it was on us to kind of start practicing the telepathy that they were teaching us through this sap. So another piece for us to play with wow that's powerful yeah right the, the consciousness of a tree could, could you even imagine being a tree <laughs> that's a, a really a pretty good exercise and how do you think this this telepathy that that is being taught by by the trees <laughs> i just hear myself asking this question it's, it's funny, but at the same time, it's, it's wonderful to talk about this stuff. How do you think this telepathy, uh, have you had any, do, do you feel it's working, this teaching that, that, that they've given you? Do you think it's something that, that's starting to become replicated in a, in, a, in a larger scale also? It's nothing that I'm seeing with my conscious mind, and I'm also realizing that most of what's going on is happening at an unconscious level. So. I mean, we have a little telegram group and we're not that great with, we're not communicating on the super regular. I'm sure there would be ways for us to stay in deeper touch to really study it. I'm assuming kind of, I mean, the way I do everything and maybe it's lazy and maybe it's a cop out, but I just assume that because I'm open that I'm willing that it's all happening. And then when, when the time comes for me to utilize it, that it will be there. I don't know. Like I said, maybe that's a cop out. But I, also I don't think. I don't think it's a cop out. I mean, that is your intuition telling you. Okay, it's not something that I need to to have a, a voltmeter and see the the electricity that's going when I'm thinking of it. No, you don't need to do that. You you'll know it when you see it, or you'll see it when you know it. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that. I appreciate yeah. that, and I do think. And we're changing so rapidly and I don't think anyone really knows what it is that we're doing, but, um, you know, there might come a time and it, it might happen tomorrow. It might happen today where it's like, okay, no more cell phones. It's not safe. No more internet. It's not safe. And then how am I going to connect with you, Rafa? How am I going to connect with Emily? So I feel like a lot of things are happening to prepare us for these incredible shifts and changes that we're all navigating right as if, if if it was very sudden we would be left kind of naked but if if we had a, a kind of gradient towards the thing we'd be more prepared yeah for me um it's it's happened in in ways i, I don't necessarily would say that I, I can hear the voice of somebody else and communicate I, i'm not there but it's it's happened recently where I was thinking of a friend that I hadn't think, thought about for very long. And suddenly on Instagram, he started appearing and liking my stuff, which I hadn't been seeing him there either. So like the, the technology is kind of working as, a, as an, an intermediary station for, 
for the the creation of that i wonder i wonder how yeah how fantastic it must have been in in times when this was more awake again you know the 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 bars of the ability for this character in the game we we have some that are so underdeveloped and in a way technology is helping us remember these abilities but it's also become kind of a crutch so we use the technology and and some some don't realize that we could do this uh, naturally so i I'm, I'm really hopeful for the future of humanity um i, I want to share another another quote from that uh walter Ru walter russell that i was speaking before because it also had to do with this and i think we've already gone for for pretty long uh, we, we're both tired, probably. So um, the, it's, it's a pretty, a pretty interesting thing. He says, our civilization would progress materially very much faster and with greater stability of moral character, which accompanies spiritual growth, if the paramount purpose of man were to help the omnipresent mind to think and know, rather than the present purpose of helping the physical brain to remember and repeat. Mm. Right. And I think that encapsulates and, and talks about this, the uh, awakening of the divine feminine and, and the healing of humanity. Mm, yes, I Don't love you? that. Mm. Totally. Yeah, mm. beautiful. Okay, <laughs> this has been, again, a great conversation. I, I like the flow we have. Um, I'm going to let you go now. So please go ahead and share with, with those that, that might not that might not know your your links uh you can find me on dannycats.com that'll link you to quantumlanguaging.com where you could learn all about my coaching and consulting work my saturday group coaching salons you can find tons of free quantum languaging hacks on my video channel on odyssey you can find that link through dannycats.com follow me on instagram something.danny and thank you so much for having me, Rafa. It's so fun to drop in with you and play Aquarius. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me as well. Um, it, it's also been sort of uh, telepathy, synchronicity. They kind of go hand in hand. And finding about people like yourself, like Emily, you know, these people with, with whom I resonate so much. And and coming from a place where, where I, I can remember it not long ago feeling so so alone, so uh, disconnected, and now finding finding the others, you know, finding those those people that resonate. At least for now, it's through the screen, but uh, eventually it might be we we might be um, able to to meet in person. But as well, there is the the astral realms, and who knows? Actually, you know what? I I had the the like the the courage to to first con, uh, contact Emily. Because my girlfriend, who who is very kind of psychically aware, um, she or psychically sensitive, let's say, she dreamt about her. She she was in a dream and she hears a laughter. Okay, and we all know about Emily's laughter. And when she sees the person that was laughing, it was her. So when she woke up, she told me, "Hey, I dreamt with this one, and and I I remember this laughter. It's one of the people that you that you listen to on, on the podcasts." So I, I showed her one of Emily's podcasts. Yes, that's her. So then I said, okay, this is definitely a sign from somewhere that I need to start getting in contact. And well, uh, it's been a, a great, a great step for me, you know, creating the podcast and and reaching out to to people like you and and having such such amazing conversations that I feel are very nurturing for me and I hope also for you and for the audience watching. So thank you so much for being open to 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 a conversation with a stranger and to I, I think there is this this thing that it's it's kind of a friendship you know it's that that starts developing even though we've never met we've talked only maybe twice or a little bit through chat but uh, there is this kind of resonance you know between all of us and and I wonder who who we were in in past lives that there is a resonance today when when we live so far apart so um, I want to thank you so much for being there. Thank you to the audience. And yeah, you can, oh, you can follow me on Instagram and, and you can message me. And uh, if you're interested in, 
in Akashic Records readings or in sound healing or, or just some, some guidance or counseling or coaching, you can also write and, and ask and we'll see what, what we can do. Okay, I am sending lots of love to everybody and thank you so much. Bye-bye, namaste. Thanks. Bye.